All right, everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Today's episode, we're going to be looking at defensemen to trade for before your fantasy hockey trade deadline. We did forwards earlier this week, so be sure to check out that video. Gave out nine forwards that you could potentially trade for. That'll certainly help you in the second half of the season, in the playoffs, uh, kind of whatever you're looking for there. Today, six defensemen to get into, four really going in-depth into, and then two are kind of honorable mentions at the end that have a little bit of a caveat into as well. So let's get into these six players for today. All right, so the first guy we're going to be looking at today is actually Brandon Montour on the Florida Panthers. So obviously he missed 10 plus games, probably around closer to 15 games at the beginning of the season due to an injury him and Ekblad were both out at the same time to start the season and both came back at the same time as well but you look at obviously his season ranking isn't going to be that great considering how many games he has missed at this point he's the 113th ranked defenseman 413th in fantasy points scored so far this year when looking at all skaters not just defensemen and then also if you look at the last 30 days even when he has been playing outside the top 200 but I know this might be an obvious one to think of considering he has been underperforming you look at his season last year but there's definitely a couple of things here that I think you can kind of really bank on the fact that he will have a great second half here or following the all-star break all the way into your fantasy hockey playoffs because if you've kept him now at this point as well you can't really trade him because his value is not that great uh, you, you wouldn't be getting the same return I would let's say you would be getting from him at the beginning of the year that's a hundred percent so I would hold on to him and if you don't have him I'd definitely try to get him and a lot of people have been saying in the comments what do I do with Montour what do I do with Montour because he hasn't been performing necessarily and really you just want to keep him because this Florida Panthers team is still one of the best teams in the east they've been playing fantastic recently it's just hasn't the points and, and fantasy points scored hasn't really fallen in his favor but he's doing everything he can to really get there as well but if you look at the, over the last 30 days like guys like Josh Manson Artem Zub Niels Lundqvist on the stars all have more fantasy points scored than Brandon Montour uh, over that stretch but since December 1st he has put some very good analytical numbers together he's second in expected goals for amongst defensemen only behind Josh Morrissey over this last 60 day span almost you want to call it uh, which is obviously Obviously very important he just doesn't really have a ton to show for it at this point he's fifth in shots on goal over that stretch as well and then second in scoring chances so creating a ton of offense for this Florida Panthers team as well and if you look at since December 1st his analytics in terms of you know shots scoring chances high danger scoring chances all very similar to Roman Yossi's he's probably a couple less in each of those categories but he's 18 less points so that just goes to show the amount of offense that Montour is creating can turn into a lot of points uh, and you know this Panthers team as they continue to compete for one of the top playoff spots in the east I think he'll can he'll finally find his footing and start to score I mean this is a guy last year that had 70 plus points I believe he had 30 plus power play points as well he just hasn't really gotten going uh in, in the point category on the stat sheet so far this year but I think he will and I think there's a lot of reasons to believe in it so try to trade for Brandon Montour and if you have him on your team certainly keep him because he's going to help you a lot when it comes to playoff time. all right so the next defenseman we're looking at is Jake Sanderson on the Ottawa Senators if you look at his play for the season and over the last 30 days, pretty similar here in terms of his ranking amongst all fantasy hockey defensemen right now. Top 30 uh, over the last 30 days for his season total as well. He's had stretches where he's played really well, stretches where he hasn't really done a whole lot and hasn't really played a lot. And now again, he's back up into a stretch where he's playing a ton and he's getting used a lot more here. Since December 1st, he's third in expected goals for amongst defensemen, which is a great number to be right next to Brandon Montour and Josh Morrissey, close to Roman Yossi and all those guys. His usage also in the month of January has absolutely skyrocketed. Uh, you know, with Shabbat being hurt for two different periods of this season, I think really gave the opportunity for this Sens team to see how good Jake Sanderson is in the number one D role. And he's certainly been given that opportunity. He's playing 23 minutes a night in the month of January. In three of those games, he played more than 25 minutes. His shot attempts as well are also up. He's averaging three shots on goal per game in the month of January. And he's also solidified himself in that first power play spot on the point. Uh, you know, obviously he won't score every game, but he looks much more comfortable this year than he did last year in pretty much every single situation. His stats even show it to this point as well. He's already surpassed his goal total from last season, which was four. He's already had seven goals. I can honestly see him doubling it or close to doubling it for the rest of the season as well. You know, getting up to the 12 to 14 goals, which obviously proved very valuable for your fantasy hockey team. And I think the biggest thing too that 
you know, DJ Smith probably had faith in him. And now Jacques Martin, the new head coach for the Senators, have faith in him is he was dash six last year. plus minus. This year, he's a plus five on a Senators team that's the worst in the Eastern Conference right now, right at the bottom of the barrel. Granted, they've played less games than pretty much every single team in the NHL so far this year. But still, regardless, it's obviously not a good position to be. They have a losing record. And yet this guy, whenever he's on the ice, he's, you know, he's creating offense and disallowing offense coming back on the other side of it. So Jake Sanderson, a guy I think will be probably right now one of the more sought out for defensemen in terms of fantasy hockey wise. You want to look at dynasty leagues or even just, you know, year by year leagues. He's very valuable. And I think for the rest of the year, as the Sens kind of make this push to not finish dead last, I will say he will probably be, uh, you know, scoring a lot more goals, getting a lot more points and is really helping out your fantasy hockey team. So although he has been a popular ad or guy for the last couple of weeks, I think he's definitely useful to try and trade for or try to get onto your team. Looking at the next defenseman we're going to want to target before the trade deadline, and that's Brock Faber. You know, if you got in on Brock Faber early at the beginning of the year, congrats. It's a huge addition to your team because he's been one of the better defensemen, not only looking at rookies, just in the NHL as well, especially as of late. You know, if you look at his last 30 days, he's 12th in terms of fantasy hockey points scored amongst defensemen, just outside the top 100 when you're looking at all skaters, which is very valuable as well. And then for the season total, he's all the way up inside that top 30 now. So there's a couple of reasons why I think Faber can be so valuable for the rest of the season. For one, I kind of mentioned in my video last, though, about forwards, you know, I was talking about Ricard Raquel and the Penguins power play and how it continues to underperform. The wild power play is also a power play that's underperforming. They're creating a lot of offense, but have a very low shooting percentage and I think that will start to turn their way here in the second half of the season biggest reason and biggest part for that Minnesota has the fourth easiest remaining schedule Brock Faber an absolute staple on that first power play now that Jared Spurgeon is out for the rest of the year as well that's what's also huge for Brock Faber the fact that Jared Spurgeon is out Brock Faber is now the full number one defenseman on this team we saw it when Spurgeon went down earlier in the year you know they they mix it around with you know Jonas Brodeen and Faber Middleton splitting around the minutes you know kind of getting Faber's feet wet but as soon as they saw anything from this Faber kid immediately it was okay 25 minutes per game because if you look at his last five games he's played 25 33 26 36 24 50 27 minutes and then again 28 minutes on the ice. So he plays in every single situation, which is obviously what you want for your fantasy hockey defenseman. He's just recently coming off a six game point streak as well. And if you look at his numbers since December 1st, I know he only has three, he only has three goals to show for it, but he's top 20 in expected goals for. So he's creating a lot of his own offense, getting a decent amount of shots on net as well. And then also just an absolute assist merchant leads all rookies in assists so far this season. So as I mentioned, really easy schedule for the Wild. If he continues to be that leader on the power play, I think that will prove to be very valuable to his fantasy hockey. I think this Minnesota team as a whole will see some positive uh, regression in terms of their offensive skill set and being able to score a little bit more goals as well. So that will also obviously help Brock Faber in that sense too. So definitely try to get Brock Faber. I know it's not really news that will be hidden under a rock. He's very, very important player in the league right now. So uh, yeah, Faber, trade for him. All right, the last defenseman we'll get into before mentioning the two honorable mentions, and that's Alex Petrangelo on the Vegas Golden Knights. So a guy that's definitely, I would say, underperformed in terms of fantasy hockey thus far this season. A guy who's perennially been a top 15, top 20 fantasy hockey defenseman over the last three to four years. This year, right now, on the season, sits just inside the top 35, and then over the last 30 days, he's right around that 40th ranked defenseman mark. But this has been, as I mentioned, to start one of his worst seasons yet in terms of points production the Vegas started off really hot and then kind of went on a little bit of a cold streak here so but he I think has a lot of value to kind of bounce back in the second half of the season as Vegas continues to battle and stay in a playoff position in that tough Western Conference for one if you look at his numbers since December 1st very encouraging he's top 25 in expected goals for now he's rocking a shooting percentage that's less than two percent it's kind of on par for his season as well but he's consistently been a guy who's had a shooting percentage of about 5 to 6%. Some of his best seasons we've seen closer 7 8%. So I think we'll see him score definitely a lot more goals in the second half of the season because he continues to shoot the puck like he has the last few years. And one thing, if you look at his totals over the last few seasons, Vegas always controlling play more and creating a lot more offense when he's on the ice. That's not all that shocking, but it's very true. Even when you look at his numbers compared to when he was at in St. Louis, this is the volume of offense that Vegas is creating when Petrangelo is on the ice is 
is is very big right now and obviously it is very key to this team's success. Shea Theodore will be back at some point. He's been week to week since undergoing surgery at the end of November. So you can't be week to week for two months and continue to be week to week. So I'm sure after the All-Star break, they'll be able to kind of let you know there what's going on with him. But I don't think that really that hurts Petrangelo's fantasy hockey value either. And the one good thing for Petrangelo too, he contributes in all categories, more or less. You know, he's dependable in assists, points, even goals. Like I mentioned, you know, eight of his seasons throughout his NHL career, he's had double digit goals around the, the 12 to 14 goal mark as well. He always has at least 150 shots on goal as well. And will most likely surpass 200 uh, block shots this year as he already has over 100. So valuable in a lot of different categories. I think his shooting percentage will continue to increase as this Vegas team gets a little bit healthier and starts to win a couple more games here. So Vegas has a pretty easy remaining schedule. I think Petrangelo, you know, feed off kind of how bad he was for a couple stretches here. You don't have to give up a whole lot to get him, I wouldn't think. his Obviously, his name value carries a little bit, but if players actually, people are actually looking at his stats, they might be like, okay, I'm done with Petrangelo. I'll move on to somebody else. So definitely try to take advantage that and get Petrangelo on your team for the rest of the season. All right, the two honorable mentions I'll be looking at here, just two guys that didn't quite make the cut, but if you are in deeper leagues, could be valuable to look at trading for. Noah Hannafin right now sits just inside the top 35 in terms of fantasy hockey defenseman, in terms of points scored since December 1st, 13th in expected goals for. He plays in all the best situations on this Calgary Flames team as well. Currently playing on the top pair, top power play, and the top penalty kill as well. The one worrisome thing, obviously his name has been flying around some trades trade rumors uh, if he gets moved at the deadline. Also, Mackenzie Wieger and Rasmus Anderson also pretty viable in fantasy hockey too and currently have more points for him. So maybe we're seeing a stretch here from Noah Hannafin that's not necessarily sustainable for the rest of the season. But I still think looking at his analytics and his numbers and where he's playing on this Flames team right now, uh, you can still take a stab on him. And then the other guy, Thomas Harley has really bursted on the scene recently. Eight goals since December 1st. That's tied first amongst defensemen with Rasmus Dahlin. I just don't know if his value is too high right now to actually trade for him if it's worth it at this point because you're taking a risk on a very young player on a pretty crowded defensive room if you're looking at points and the the points the total point share between these guys as well with Heiskanen you know Harley, Esselindel, Lundqvist have all been contributing pretty high rate so one of them or two of them are going to regress at some point I don't think it'll be Harley but it could at that point which is why he didn't make it on this total list but definitely a guy you can consider as well all right thank you guys for tuning in let me know what you thought of the defenseman to trade for before the fantasy hockey trade deadline we love to know who you guys are targeting or who you're trying to get rid off your team before the trade deadline kind of arises in your league. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.